In this video, I'm going over installing Arch Linux with a desktop environment using a very minimal method to where we can pick and choose exactly what we need without getting this huge bloat, like a vanilla Debian. These are real small, minimal operating systems, but sometimes they just get bloated up. Like when you go to install any Ubuntu or Ubuntu spin, it's just so cumbersome and it slows your computer down. Your computer can run at optimal speeds and that's what I kind of want to go over in this video with the vanilla Arch install to have that minimal install to have maximum performance. So the Archify script is actually going to be done using a wget at the very beginning. It almost looks like I'm not even using a script. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go ahead and preface this that look for that two commands. It's just wget archify and then the source forge address and then it's sh space archify and then away you go. So that's how I start this video off and I'll put that in big bold letters as well and try and zoom in a little bit for you. Uh, but with this you're gonna have just a great Arch installation because a lot of times you get Arch installed and I kind of go over this. This was actually done in a live stream and I'm just gonna chop up all the pertinent parts to where you can use this live stream install of Arch to really have the best Arch Linux build because too many people, one, don't install enough stuff or two, install way too much stuff. And really what we're trying to get away from here is the latter. We really don't want too much stuff in our Linux install bloating it up. So with all that said, let's jump over on the desktop and get to installing. Because there's a lot of things when you do an Arch install, you can succeed, but you really don't succeed. Like you get a kind of working Arch install or a working Arch install, but there's stuff that you miss. And that's one thing I kind of want to go over. And when I did this Arch Vice script, um, I found that there's some stuff when I did it the first time I really didn't like. All right, so we download Archify and then we're just gonna run this. And it's nice because it kind of brings you up. You just select your, your language, keyboard layout, all those things that you normally would be like editing text files and stuff for. Um, and it creates all the partitions for you if you go down that road. Now, I didn't actually say this. I had to kind of tinker around a little bit to figure out the partitioning. And like the swaps three, the roots four, the homes none. But this is the actual partition tables as set up in Archify. And there we go. And this is kind of weird, like it should probably take some of these options away because the boot should be EFI, uh, swap, swap, and then this one is like your main root partition, which they don't have a home partition even though it mentions it, so I thought that was kind of interesting. So with that, we should be able to install the basis here. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally cheating with this script, but I kind of want to lay out the script because it's not well documented. Like I was looking for the Archify script and how it was actually documented online. And I quickly figured out that the Archify script was not well documented, like the auto partitioning and uh, those types of things. And then also there's some caveats, like when you actually get in here it doesn't tell you certain aspects of the install, which I thought was kind of interesting. It'll make sense if you've done Arch before, you'll be like, oh yeah, this makes total sense. But if a noob ran the script, they would totally get lost in here or in, end up installing way too much stuff. All right, now we're gonna configure it. We're gonna name it Arch Linux, keyboard layout, US, set locale, E N U S, where are you at? There we go. And this is kind of weird. Like when you set the time in here, the Arch script or Archify script has US segregated. It's not considered America, it's considered US. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, let's use the hardware clock, yes.
So yeah, now right now I'm just generating an F-stab going through. This is pretty hard to screw up. Uh, bootloader, we're gonna use grub, and we're gonna install grub. Should have our config, and now we just simply install. Yeah, and that's just it. I kinda wanted to show this script because everyone can get like base arch working fairly easily. Um, one thing about the script too, like you have to hit back to go back. Um, but it still drops you down to the next checkbox, really, to go through. So right now, we've done the root password, set all this stuff up, and now we could literally reboot the machine and it'd be fully functional Arch server. So now we go into the actual desktop. So um, this is kind of an interesting part where I think a lot of people could uh, get a little lost in. So... First off, this is the updates menu. Pac-Man contrib, you should totally do. So it has like a mirror function to really update your mirrors, which is good. And then you can kind of choose what uh, you want to do. You want to do Trizen, Yay, AUR man, Yoart. You can do multiples in here, but uh, you should never do multiples. So that's why I was like, uh, just make sure you pick which one you like. So let's pick Yay. Yay is my favorite for the AUR interface. A lot of people see like a lot of guides online that are like YoArt and this completely depreciated, don't use YoArt, always use Yay. Uh, Trizen is kind of interesting and I actually kind of like it a bit. The install is a lot faster than if you did Yay because Yay requires Go, which is pretty big. So Yay does bloat up the install a little bit. Um, but I do like its functionality a little bit better. Yeah, they shouldn't put YoArt. I think you're just asking for problems. All right, so we installed Yay. We've already done that. Um, could do an upgrade here, but I think right now, I think we're gonna just go ahead and back out. And then let's go ahead and install. And from the install menu, we're just going to go down each one of these categories and you can kind of see what you can do from it. Why I like this script. So we're going to go to console. We definitely want all these things. This will give you like bash auto completion. So like when you're typing something in and you'll get like a tab and it'll auto complete. And then we'll go to compression tools. Grab all these compression tools for RAR files, 7-zip files, zip files. All these are needed. We'll go to networking, rsync, and trace route and bind tools. Rsync's great for a lot of backups. Uh, trace route, I think everyone should use, especially because you can see where your internet's failing whenever you have internet issues. So you should always have that in. And then we can choose our web browser. Oh, nope. This is just terminal web browser, which I'm not crazy, so I don't use that stuff. And we don't need any recovery tools. So with the console done, now we can go into system, kernel, um, what you should do, default is already installed. Um, definitely install the LTS as well. I highly recommend it. I'm not gonna do it on this one, but I would actually come in here and do LTS as well. For services, all this stuff's awesome. Definitely pick it up as well. Um, AMD microcode, a lot of people miss that one. Um, if you're using AMD processor or Intel, likewise, get the Intel U code as well. And then Crony does your scheduled tasks, network manager. If you have any Wi Fi or anything like that, you should probably grab that as well. We'll just make sure that that enables on boot. And by doing network manager, we do need to now disable DHCPD. So yes. With that, uh, we want to enable SSH on boot. We want to start crony on boot. That's our scheduled tasks. And numlock on boot as well. I like numlock on. All right, file system. OS Prober, if you're doing multiple OSs, definitely choose that so it'll do that. The other things in here is like NTFS and AutoFS and XFAT. This gives you a lot of file system support, which is great. So definitely check this out. All right, we'll install Alsa and Pulse Audio here. Um, we're not going to install cups. It's a big install, and I don't really care about printer support, but it's there in this uh, install menu. So 
Good to know. All right, Xorg, we need our display rendering. So let's install Xorg server and Xorg init. But I did kind of just run through it for everyone just to kind of see this. I was really impressed with this script because I've done a lot of Arch install scripts and all of them like usually fail in a certain area. And this one was probably the cleanest and best as far as everything I've seen. So um, you get all your fonts here. So it goes ahead and grabs all of the open source fonts, which most people use. And then it also has the Windows fonts too here. So let's, I'll show you that. Yeah, true type fonts. And you can actually install the true top Microsoft fonts from the AUR. Uh, so I usually go ahead and do that as well from the builder here. Xorg input drivers, yes, let's install those. And then video drivers, open source. And then you can choose your open source one, which we're not gonna choose anything for this guy. And then let's get our desktop environment installed and we'll do KDE. So this is kind of cool. You can kind of customize KDE to be like, you know what? I don't want K that right. Um, I don't want a lot of this stuff here. Let's see. Mm, discover definitely don't want. And then you can kind of just pick out exactly what you want out of KDE, which is really neat. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we could go to KDE and do a whole bunch of stuff here, but let's let's not. Let's just say, okay, that's done. Because we're almost done with this install anyways. Um, we're using SDDM because we're using KDE. We'll enable that at boot. We'll go back. Display manager. We already, we, did I just click on that? I think, yeah, I just clicked on that. All right, and then you can pick out Office, Internet, Graphics, System, um, Pac-Man GUI. Uh, I always like Pomac. That's good, but since we're using KDE, probably should use Octopi because I made a video about how when I was running Pomac, which is GTK based in, I think KDE at the time, it might not have been, but I remember it crashing right in the middle of updating uh, using Pomac. So I always recommend using Terminal to update your stuff, but we'll go ahead and like install Octopi because why not? All right, so we're done with install. Let's see what config. We'll config bash, we'll make our editor nano. Aliases, you can kind of choose what aliases go in there, which is kind of cool. So let's, uh, Tab over, hit OK. Your script, you can choose what your bash script will be. Um, do you want it minimal, user and that, user and host name, which is kind of cool. And then we just update the bash RC. It does both your user and also the one user there. So firewall, you can set up your firewall in here. Accounts, you probably want to add a user. So I'd probably add um, Titus and then set the password. And then you can list what users are on here. Titus, that's the only user. So do that. And back. System D, you can set up like time date control. Exorg, you can, I don't think you need to generate. Let's not do that. And then boot configuration if you wanna change your boot configuration. Past that, we're pretty much done here, guys. I mean, this is, pretty darn easy let's unmount and let's go back reboot and see what we get here we go so we're already in arch linux um, this is using the kde desktop environment of arch linux you notice how much snappier this is how quick it is arch linux when i install like uh, ubuntu spin of kde it's not nearly as clean as this right here this is just ridiculous how uh minimal this is like when i switch off of debian i probably will come back to arch 
and do exactly this right here. This is just so pleasant to just come in here and do all and just have it all right here. And this is directly from where we're at. So we don't have any bloat, none whatsoever. Like let's go through the applications menu just so you can see what's installed. So it's a minimal plasma I uninstalled and I could even strip this down even further because I don't like a lot of like K writer and K win and all these other uh, application bundles that come with desktop environments. Um, internet, multimedia, there's really not much here, just the QT stuff, system settings, that's it. And then we installed Octopi for a GUI updater just because that's fun to do. So that's pretty much all there is to this. This is as minimal as you can get. But yeah, this is basically, your, you basically build this out as you want. And that's what I kind of wanted to make today's video about, or this live stream, just to kind of show you ArchFi and using it as far as, this is on a VM, just you four virtuals and four gigs of memory. So this is a pretty basic one. A lot of people mistake how slow Linux can get when it gets bloated up. So here we go, we're at the BIOS, we selected it, and it's going into boot. So one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and we're at the login screen. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. So literally uh, five seconds between the login and desktop, and then three seconds between the actual BIOS and login. So a total of less than 10 seconds for this whole thing. That's how good a minimal Arch install is. That's why I love it. That's why I did like vanilla Debian because the same thing holds true in a Debian install. It's getting it there though. It can be so cumbersome and building it out. Uh, it's such a pain in the butt. And that's why I like the ArchFi script because you can pick exactly what you need and exactly what you want because following a lot of those other scripts just bloats it all up. But so there you have it. That's my Arch Linux minimal install. I really, really love this. I love it so much. I probably might even leave Debian vanilla to go back to Arch just because there's certain things I like about Arch. It's rolling release. You always get the bleeding edge. You always have the absolute latest packages. Uh, all those things are really great. And then on top of all that, you have the AUR where you can install pretty much anything you want without having to go to GitHub and download all the instructions. The AUR just builds it for you. So that's what I love about it. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm always curious because so many people think Arch is really hard to install or really hard to get working properly. And what I loved about the ArchFi script is it kind of took all that away. It seemed very, very easy to me, but there were a couple of caveats in this video where I could see where people could go wrong and why I made this video. Uh, but with all that said, a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.